Eyes Wide X Humidity here, everyone's favorite YouTuber who stutters and mispronounces. And today, I'm doing a list on my all-time favorite death metal albums. As you guys know, I'm no stranger to doing top 10 lists on this channel. As back in the early years of the channel in 2015 and 16, I would do all these top 10 lists basically every day on black metal all the time from my favorite black metal bands to my favorite black metal bands from a certain country to a certain continent. It was just so oversaturated what I did and I realized I've just really gave death metal the backseat on so many conversations on this channel and I'm trying ever so slightly to bring it more into the conversation on this channel. I figured what better way to do it than do a list I'm surprised I've never done before which is my all-time favorite top 10 death metal albums. Now keep this in mind this is only full length so demos, EPs, splits, compilations, live albums do not qualify. So right off the bat, sorry to tell you Time Ghoul, as amazing as the band was and as awesome as the demos are, they do not qualify for this list. But before we get into the top 10 list itself, I have five honorable mentions that I just wanna breeze by through fairly quickly. First one is Dismember, like an ever-flowing stream, I mean, you guys should all know this album, a Swedish death metal classic that is highly appraised for all the good reasons. Riffs galore that are just thick and crushing, and I mean, I'm really not going to give that much detail into it. You should all know it. Second honorable mention is The Chasm, Procession to the Infraworld. Basically, if you're a Bloody Incantation fan and you don't know who The Chasm is, shame on you. As you can tell, they definitely took a bit of influence from it because they are kind of like have that retro death metal style to them that a lot more people have been eating up as of recently. Third honorable mention goes to Demigod, Slumber of Sullen Eyes. Just like the Chasm has a kind of like retro death metal style as well and a lot more people have given it a lot of a praise and for me personally it's the crown gem when talking about Finnish death metal. Fourth honorable mention goes to Abyssal with his latest full length as of yet anti -catathesis. He's got a new full length coming out next month, which I'm really hyped to be checking out. But Abyssal is a very creative death metal band, as it's kind of like has some elements of being like atmospheric death metal to an extent, with other elements of black metal and doom metal kind of mixed in for good measure. But it's kind of also as well very dissonant, but somehow still accessible since he makes all of his riffs and all of his experimentations very melodic and somewhat harmonizing when you consider the fact that you have all these other subgenres kind of clashing into one another and it's quite the treat to listen to anything by Abyssal. And he's only gotten better as of recently with his uh, full one, so I'm really hyped again to check out his new album. But as of right now, his personal best is anti Catathesis. And the final honorable mention is the one sole album by Xenomorph, a death metal band that was only around for, I think, maybe two or three years, and then I believe one of the members uh, died, sadly. But god damn, this album is just so savage. The one negative thing I guess I can say about it, which does keep it from being in the top ten, is that the drumming on this album is a bit uh, sloppy, but at the same time, I like the fact that it's sloppy because it just enhances just that savage, primal sound to it. And basically how I've always looked at Xenomorph with this full length right here, it's basically Morbid Angel's Altars of Madness, but just messier and more savage. And now we move on to the list itself. And speaking of Morbid Angel, coming in at number 10 starting this list is Morbid Angel's debut full length, Altars of Madness. That's right guys, my favorite Morbid Angel album is their debut. Now you can say that during their aging careers with other albums, they matured with their writing style like Blessed Are the Sick or Covenant or Domination, I get it, but to me, Altars of Madness is when they were the most savage and primal sounding with really nothing fancy here. This is just their meanest they've ever been with the opening track on here, Mortal Rights, which is just so frightening sounding the intro. And when that snare drum pops, god damn, I get goosebumps every time with that song. 
And then there's my favorite song I really they ever wrote, which is Chapel of Ghouls, which just has this savage, crushing chorus come through. And David Vincent's vocals are just spine-tingling how just savage and nasty it sounds. Just like I stated, guys, this is Morbid Angel at their harshest. This is Morbid Angel at their most aggressive and just ruthless they'll ever be. And I just simply can't get enough of this album. It's a banger from start to finish. It's a classic for a reason. And it's a really an album you guys should all know. Coming in at number nine is Discarnate's sophomore full length, And So It Came To Pass. So Discarnate is a three-piece UK-based death metal band. And unlike other albums and bands I'm going to be talking about on this top ten list, that maybe have done something genre-defining or groundbreaking, Discarnate's definitely not one of those bands that you would kind of use those adjectives with, but I guess what I love about it so much is just how damn fucking catchy it is, and the writing style, and how the vocals kind of go back and forth with one another, the highs and lows just make the album just so fun and engaging, for me at least, that the replay value and the times I've listened to it over and over again just never seem to get sickening, and just overall it's basically become one of my all-time favorites for death metal on here. Now, like I stated, it's nothing groundbreaking, it's nothing you've never heard before, and really the only characteristics it has which will make it kind of more of a standout from your typical death metal band is that there's kind of like these metallic hardcore moments on this album, especially on some of the breakdowns that you can really tell they took a little bit of influence from bands like Propane. But the vocal performance on here, like I stated, is truly the thing that I just fall in love with, with the highs and lows, going back and forth with one another, doing like calling cards <clears throat> out to each other. You have songs like Rise and Fall where the vocals kind of in sync with each other and it just makes it sound just so much more massive and demonic sounding. Then there's the big single on here, the Promethean, that has just these crushing drums and fills on here that just feel like earthquakes happening underneath you, and the vocals that are just so insanely behemoth sounding. And that's the thing I really like about the lows on this album. It's like Nurgle, but with just way more beef and way more sharper teeth, I might add, as well. And I guess, for me, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's just death metal done really simplistic, but really, really damn well. For the number eight spot, I picked Mitochondrian with their full-length Archeion. Canadian-based death metal band Mitochondrian with their debut full-length Archeion is an album that still blows me away to this day. It's 70 minutes long, but with, with all these transitions and components with it, the keyboards and all these bells and whistles added to it, these 70 minutes really fly by and it doesn't really overstay its welcome, which is saying a lot because it's over an hour long. As well, too, it's more like a melodic version of Portal. As well, there's more vocal styles being presented to you here, so there's just like... It's, to me, it's always looked at as a more accessible version of Portal Mitochondrian. And really, the guitar work on this album is just absolutely phenomenal. Not only are they straightforward at some points and really crushing and dismal, but then there's these solos that just add so much melody and makes the album more harmonizing sounding. There is a lot of twists and turns to this album, yes, but that's what just makes it so interesting and really makes it flow a lot easier for the listener in my personal view. And if you just really want a kind of experimental take on death metal that's really fun and easy to listen to for the most part when considering experimental death metal, Mitochondrian Archeion is an album you should all give a chance. Now on to number seven, which is the only full length by Molested with their full length Blued Dream. This full length right here is just 36 minutes of pure, unadulterated death metal, all right? This was released back, I believe, in 1995, and for today's standards, 2019, this is just insanely heavy and mesmerizing, but I can only imagine what listeners must have thought back nearly two and a half decades ago when they heard a beast 
like this. Now it is very dismal, just like Mitochondrion and Portal and all these other bands I talk about. But whereas those bands have like this experimental take on it that kind of gives you all different transitions and twists and turns, Molested is just way more on that ground and pound style where it really doesn't play around with your minds. It will just put you on the ground and keep you there and beat you into a bloody pulp. And god damn, this album is just intense from start to finish. Even at the parts where there's like these weird folk interludes on here, it still has like this threatening aura to it that really just gives like kind of freshens up the album, I must say, when you get to like these folk interludes. But guys, when the death metal comes back into it, it hits harder than ever. So if you really want just more of a straightforward ground and pound style to dissonant death metal, the One Soul album by Molested is the best place I can point you to. Now on to number six, which will go to Exhumed's 2013 full-length Necrocracy. Yep, Necrocracy is my favorite Exhumed album, which is probably going to upset a few of you guys because the fan favorite is gore metal, where they really had more of a death grind sound to them that really resonated a lot with Carcass fans. And basically, every album before Necrocracy, they were a death grind band, but later era, everything after uh, Necrocracy, they became more of a just straightforward death metal band. And to some people, this is kind of the upset, and for others, it's a much more mature and better change, and I'm just, I guess, one of those people that really enjoyed it, because lyrical themes, as you can tell just from the album title alone, deal with this political climate we're in, and it just made the album just come off more mature and real, whereas other lyrical uh, themes with the albums were about blood and gore and kind of like a more of a horror movie, torture porn, I guess, sound to it lyrically, whereas this album just kind of clicks with me more because it just sounds more real when you look at songs like Coins Upon the Eyes, Necrocracy, Dysmorphic, or Sickened. And by the way, Sickened just has this fucking gnarly and awesome guitar solo that I've never seemed to get sick of. For me personally, though this album may be more toned down in the aggression since the grindcore aspect is completely gone with them, the guitar work is just really enhanced more. It's more melodic. And even though it is melodic, it just sounds still as gory as ever. The percussions on here mixed and mastered, I think, perfectly. The vocal transitions between Matt Harvey and uh, the bass player are just so, so damnly well executed on this album. It comes off more catchy. The, the guitar work just comes off more melodic, in my opinion. And the writing style has just matured more than ever for them. It's a catchy album, it's a more realistic album, and it's an always the album I go to, personally, when I think of Exhumed. Halfway there, and taking the fifth spot, on my top 10 list will be Intestine Balsam with their latest full length, Ultimate Instinct. Woo Wee Mama, a melodic death metal masterpiece right here that is the total package when it comes to melodic death metal, all right? If you ever hear someone say melodic death metal is cliche, nothing new can come of it, it's all mainstream death metal garbage, Show them intestine balls them so they can just shut the fuck up with that way of thinking, alright? I will never give up on enjoying and trying to find new melodic death metal bands when there are bands like Intestine Balsam that exist. And like I stated, it's the total package. You got two different vocal styles on here. You have the guttural lows that really kind of intensifies the album, makes things heavier and more crushing. Then you have the high scream shrieks on this album that make it more atmospheric, that give off new textures and sound for it and just make it way more versatile than just your typical melodic death metal album. And really I feel like veteran listeners, newcomers of death metal can really enjoy this because it's very harmonizing but very powerful at the same time. And the title track on here, that opening guitar riff is just 
oh, it's orgasmic sounding, basically. It's an album I simply can't get enough of. Each individual track on here has its highlight moments. It's a masterpiece for melodic death metal, and for me personally, one of the best death metal albums I've ever heard for the genre. Coming in fourth is Triumvir Fowl's latest full-length, Spiritual Bloodshed. Easily my favorite 2017 death metal album, and I just seemingly can't get enough of this full length right here. Now I know, when it comes to all-time favorite lists, there's kind of like, I guess, this unwritten rule that a lot of the albums you pick have to have aged well, and it seems like, you know, the older albums really get picked more often than newer albums on uh, all-time lists when you look at them. But that's not going to stop me from putting an album like this this high because for me personally, it's literally got every single component I want when I'm looking for a death metal band for this day and age. It's dark, it's dense, it's murky, it's dingy, it's filthy and vile from start to finish. The vocals on here are just so ridiculously heavy sounding and they're just soul derailing from start to finish. These guitarists on here are so damn catchy yet crushing but not even remotely melodic or harmonizing at all. It's just got like that caveman writing style factor to it that really a lot of death metal fans are just so, so easily attached to. For me, it may not be groundbreaking, but like I stated, it's got everything I want for a death metal release, and it's easily, even though it's still a fairly new album, one of my all-time favorites within the genre. Coming in third will be, I feel like, the death metal album that is the reason why you clicked on this video to see where I placed it. Coming in third is Argus Lens Incograble Bigotry. Ugh, guys, riffs fucking galore, alright? I know basically anyone who's ever talked about this album, including myself, will give so much a praise to the guitar riffs, and you just can't deny it when you listen to these guitars being played on this album. It's just so fucking infectious, but yet so goddamn dense. I'll never forget the first time I ever heard this album and the opening track that came on, which was... Uh, <clears throat> Flogging the cargo and that soul that just sweeps right by within the first opening moments of this album I basically told myself that day I'm in for a fucking treat and still to this day all the Many times I've replayed this album I still say that to myself when I play this album because oh my god the guitars are so damn good There's songs like Quillian the Simeon Scourge that have just such such hooks to it that are just so fucking thick and beefy and god fucking damn these riffs are just uh, so good in my opinion some of the best death metal i've ever heard when it comes to just straight up riffs on this album vocals are just snarling and just make the album more heavy and dense even the instrumental track on here which is the title track still carries the pace and aggression even without obviously lyrics that are, still has a lot of catchiness to it that it's just like there's no filler at any point within this album and just goddamn guys like I stated if you want the absolute best when it comes to melodic death metal though it's very controversial Argus Lint's Incogable Bigotry it's the album to go to. Coming in second on this list the runner-up for my all-time favorite death metal album is Portal's third offering Swarth. Australian death metal titans Portal, in my personal view, the abstract and dismal death metal band that whenever you're talking about a dismal death metal band, it feels like everyone somehow connects it back to Portal in some way, shape, or form. And for me personally, they're very influential when it comes to all the experimental side of death metal and extreme music. And really, to me, they had their own identity that is just, for me, has always been a one-of-a-kind death metal band. And yes, they are technical, 
but it's nothing wankery or something that feels like filler. It's technical in the sense that it just feels like it's spiraling out of control, that it gives off just this weird abstract atmosphere that's just really inhuman and very unconventional and unorthodox that just for some reason always attracts me to go back to their albums time and time again. And Swarth to me is just a masterpiece of dismal, experimental, abstract death metal. And for me, it's my second all-time favorite death metal album. Now, my all-time favorite death metal album ever made easily goes to Dragged Into Sunlight with their debut full-length Hatred for Mankind. Easily the grittiest and darkest death metal album I've ever been introduced to. And maybe it's unfair to put this number one as it has a huge advantage over any other death metal album I've ever heard. And it's because when I listen to this album, I always connect it to their live uh, performance they did back in Maryland Death Fest of 2016. It's like to this day, it's still the most intense death metal, scratch that, the most intense metal show I've ever been a part of that I was really just floored and flabbergasted, in all honesty, when their set was done, that it genuinely just felt like a, like a roller coaster ride to hell. And I always connect this album to their live performance because it's basically identical sounding how well they perform. But there's so many things about this album that just make it truly, in my opinion, the pinnacle of what death metal can do. Because yes, there's elements of black metal, there's elements of doom metal, there's some moments of sludge being thrown into here, but it just makes it all the more extreme and chaotic. And though there's still all those genres in there, at its foundation, what makes up a meat and potatoes of the extreme music styles you're gonna be heard here is death metal. It's never absent. Yes, those other subgenres come in and out, but death metal is always present whenever this album is being played. Another thing I do enjoy about this album is the audio samples within it, because it just makes it come off just way more unforgiving and harsh, and honestly, just makes this album sound real. It doesn't come off like these other albums that may be fictional that really kind of frightens you with this fictional writing style and lyrical themes. This album is real, this album is harsh, and this album is powerful because of it. And every single song on here just makes it feel like I was hit by a fucking freight train. The guitar riffs are just so crushing on this goddamn album, and the drums, how they're mixed and mastered, all the snare hits, all the tom hits, sound like skulls and bones being cracked and snapped in half, basically. And the vocals on here are just so vile. Like, it's, it's a vocal style that's uncomparable. It genuinely sounds like the dude is throwing up his intestines and insides. It's just extreme in every sense, but also real, and that's what makes it just so terrifying and frightening of an album. And to this day, and probably until the day I die, it will always be my all-time favorite death metal album. And that's it, guys, for this list of my all-time favorite top 10 death metal albums. Really curious to know what's yours. And like always, guys, hopefully you guys discovered something new. So thanks for watching, liking, supporting, and subscribing. You guys are the best, and good listens.